Whether it be on my channel, Sakuga Blog, Kanzenshi, or any other website that deals in a form of animation coverage, one of the most common questions you'll see is, how do you know who animated what? And it would be so nice if I could turn around and say, well, the studio just tells us, but unfortunately that is very rarely the case. And the truth of the matter is, Everything that goes into identifying animators is pretty much like role-playing CSI. It involves research, gathering evidence, analyzing evidence, which essentially means going frame by frame through a hell of a lot of different episodes from many different shows. By the end of it, many of us look like Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. It's very stressful, but very rewarding when you finally crack the case. Today, we are going over all the different aspects of a scene to look out for, what to keep in mind, and why it's okay to make mistakes. This is a guide on identifying animators. Let's get underway. Approaching a brand new show for the first time can be very daunting, but the best place to start is with the credits, and they will be your best friend throughout this entire process. Sites like Animators Corner put up translated versions of the staff lists for various shows, but they don't cover everything, so you may find yourself drawing kanji into Google for ones that haven't been translated. The reason to begin here is that you need context. You cannot make guesses unless you know who's working on the show. A style in one episode may look like one in another, but unless you can compare staff lists to see what recurring names there are, it could well be a coincidence. It's also a great starting point as far as research goes. It's very rare that everyone on a show is a newcomer, and often you'll find that the interesting scenes you're looking into are being done by animators who have a great deal of history in the industry. Perhaps they've been identified before, either by a director or themselves on social media. If that's the case, you can plug different names into a site like Sakugaboru and start comparing confirmed scenes against your presumptions. Sometimes that's simply not possible though, in which case I strongly recommend starting with the animation supervisors. A supervisor's job is to provide consistency within an episode. They correct, aka partially or fully redraw the artwork in scenes to ensure the characters are at least within the realms of the show's designs. They may also overhaul the movement if there are major issues there. The reason to start with them is that their style will often dominate an episode, and if you're not familiar with the supervisor's work, it can be very easy to accidentally attribute their idiosyncrasies to certain animators when really they're simply corrections. Once you understand the supervisor, you can then begin to put aside their input in your mind and take a better look at everything else. With those things in mind, let's touch on what exactly to look for when considering character art. As important as character sheets are, everyone has their own touch, and it's those standout differences that are the key to working out who's who. Ears, noses, shading, eyes, everyone has their tell, and if you find a certain stylistic trait dominates every episode a particular name is on, the likelihood is, that is them. For example, Masahiro Shimanuki in Dragon Ball Super has a very recognisable style. If we go by ears alone, you can see that distinctive shape across every single one of his episodes. He uses very large indented cheek shading and his nose is almost teardrop shaped but with a sharp 90 degree angle at the bottom. Now Kitate's drawings are very round with thick eyebrows and the eyeball starting very close to the far edge. His noses are very thick and he consistently uses a sort of rectangle cut in half when drawing grimaces. You can find these distinctive traits across every single supervisor. And while they may not be obvious upon a first viewing, it's very easy to spot these things when you look at their episodes one after the other. Sometimes it's as overt as the examples I just gave, while other times it's subtler. It depends very heavily on the extent of the supervisor's corrections. Either way, you will find them somewhere. One thing to keep in mind is the frequent use of a chief animation supervisor in modern anime. While a regular supervisor's job is to bring consistency within an episode, a chief supervisor is there to add consistency across the entire show. If you find a certain style in every single episode, or in Super's case, every other episode, chances are that's your chief supervisor stepping in. As you can see, it's like building a picture of styles, and this can often lead to identification through process of elimination. If there are three supervisors on an episode and you know two out of the three, it's not difficult to look at that leftover style, compare it to their episodes in the past where you weren't too sure, and make the connections pretty easily. If character art is primarily a tell for supervisors, then there needs to be a way to get to the animators underneath, and that's where effects and timing come into play. 
Effects refers to things like smoke, debris, beams and explosions. The shapes of these things are some of the best ways to identify an animator. For example, Naoki Tate, again, his smoke is chunky, heavily layered, with large circular shadows that sit on the edges of the plumes. Futoshi Higashide's is much more cartoony, with very bold, round shapes that are generally edgelit. Naoto Shishida's is probably one of the most distinctive out there, it's incredibly angular and features very unique shading. When it comes to beams or debris, the idea is similar, look for reoccurring shapes. Kenji Muma wants to assault you with deathly sharp beams in almost all of his scenes. Heck, the most famous example of debris would have to be Yutaka Nakamura, whose cubes have pretty much reached meme status. Next up is timing. Timing is one of the hardest things to use to identify an animator, but it is just as important. To put it simply, timing refers to how something moves, the weight or ease of various motions. Naoto Shishida, again, is one of the most famous animators with hugely recognisable timing. His characters move like rushing water and the character beams along with every movement, almost looking sped up in places. On the flip side, there are people like Mitsuo Iso who don't draw from pose to pose, but rather frame to frame, resulting in spectacularly loose and at times almost hyper-realistic movements. Learning to understand and recognise timing is incredibly useful, especially since many scenes may not contain any effects. Unlike character art, these aspects are transferable from show to show. There are no style guides for effects or timing, so unless a supervisor is a little overzealous and redraws an entire scene, they're the one strong voice an animator has across all of his or her projects. I've been doing this stuff for many years and have made a lot of mistakes along the way. As a result, I can thankfully tell newcomers what to be careful of. My biggest piece of advice is, the simplest answer is always best. If you find yourself saying, oh this is probably this guy, maybe it looks different because they had more time, or you're saying, oh this is uncredited such and such, probably just helping out, make sure you're not letting confirmation bias cloud your judgement. The aforementioned examples absolutely do happen, but generally, if you find yourself doing mental gymnastics to credit a cut, it's best to put it on the back burner until more evidence presents itself. Don't be afraid to reach out to animators on sites like Twitter. Quite often, unless the studio forbids it, they're more than happy to let you know whether your guesses are right or not. And lastly, it's okay to be wrong. After all, we're essentially playing a guessing game here. And even people who work on the shows aren't always 100% either. I remember Hideki Yamazaki being unsure whether a shot was Suji or Yamamuro when asked. Nobody's perfect, and while you can be 99% sure you're correct, there's always that 1% chance you're wrong. Identifying styles can be incredibly frustrating, but it's so rewarding when you crack someone's work. When you finally nail down who exactly did that one scene you loved, it opens up their entire back catalogue and helps you build a mental picture of the types of styles that really work for you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this serves as a nice starting point to your own adventures. If you have your own tips or you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. I've mentioned them a few times in the video, but if you are interested in learning more about different animators, learning about their styles, or learning about the industry as a whole, sakugablog.com is a fantastic resource. And their pretty large database, Sakugaboru, is a fantastic place to study up on various styles. And in general, just keep track of what amazing anime are out there. Dragon Ball is of course my specialty, so if you're interested in Super or you'd like to know a little bit more about the older series, be sure to subscribe, rate the video if you'd be so kind, and I will see you next time. Actually, just before we go, I just remembered one thing that I hope the super fans who have watched the entire video might be interested in. My last breakdown, episode 116, was of course taken down initially by Toei for apparently having too much footage or something like that, I don't really know. I re-uploaded the video with all of the footage taken out, which is of course not very ideal when talking about animation. It turns out, or it seems, like the person who blocked my video worldwide was actually just an imposter Toei account. It was shut down recently and as a result it seems like even though my copyright dispute is in progress the video is back up so if you are interested in seeing the video as it was meant to be seen and don't mind I guess watching the same video twice then I will leave a link in the description below. It's not essential but I know some people were upset that they didn't get the full experience when it was first uploaded. There's a nice little option for you there. That is a nice win for us as far as the channel goes but I guess we will see. New Roundup is of course coming Sunday so do look forward to that and yeah this time I will actually see you next time. Bye.